Welcome to Shorty Supercoach, and today we're going to take a look at the ruck division. Now, I know a lot of you guys are going Gorn and Grundy, but I just want to explore a few options, and I'm not sure it's absolutely that simple, or at least I want to give you a couple of things to think about. But look, if you haven't got around to the Instagram, give that a bit of a like or subscribe or follow, whatever the hell they say. I'm pretty tech savvy these days, but um, you can find the video that I, I had on the Instagram, um, but it's just shorties underscore supercoach. And uh, while you're at it, pray for my car. Normally, as you know, I film in my car. It's my little office. I normally like to take it outside and get a bit of sunlight going on. But um, I'm just in the garage because I twisted the key and didn't turn on. So uh, pray for shorties car. <laughs> Hopefully, uh, I'm just going to go to bed, cross my fingers, and uh, hope it turns on in the morning. But anyway... So the ruck division. Now, set and forget Gorn and Grundy. I can't debate that, particularly Grundy. I think he's got to be an absolute lock, arguably the biggest lock in the game. But I just want to discuss going both of them. Now, I will touch on this a little bit more in a few videos, particularly my um, first team that I pick that will be launched in the new year. But just working them both in, 1.4 million thrown down in your ruck department. That's a massive, massive effort. Now, the argument is, well, Shorty, I know they're going to be the top two rucks. They're the only two that can average 120 plus. Why would you muck around? And there aren't really a stack of mid-price options to think about. I understand all of that, but there's just... There's a gut feel within Shorty that's just saying, beware of Gorn. I don't know what it is, but I'm just concerned about his body and the statistics over the last four years will say you don't need to be because he's played a stack of games. But I'm all about Grundy, lock him in. Um, but I just want to discuss a few other things to think about. Now, Goldstein, you might think about but I probably think he's absolutely at his top dollar. He was a surprise last year, probably went a little bit under the radar. He averaged about 112, and I think most of us thought those 110 plus days of Goldstein were probably behind him, but he was extremely good. Now, you could mount the case that he's a very good option, and he, and he is, but he's probably going to give you anywhere from 100 to 110, and in all reality, probably somewhere in the middle. So that's really not going to cut it for us because, yes, that's a really good average, but the concern is Gorn and Grundy will be the top averaging ruckman. The only question you may have, and I sort of touched on, is do you start them both? Can you get particularly Gorn at a cheaper price? His body does seem a little bit more fragile than Grundy's. And the concern is that Goldstein, you're paying so much money that He's not a stepping stone, yet if you kept him all year, you're probably going to lose 15 points a week compared to a Gorn or a Grundy, maybe even more. So I think we could probably rule him out. Um, Rowan Marshall, you know, a very exciting pick last year, just boomed up out of nowhere. Didn't see that one coming, but Paddy Ryder joins the Saints. How does that affect Marshall? It's got to have some impact, and it's got to be negatively. Um, does Marshall play a bit more forward? Do they try and work in tandem? Only pre-season will tell us that. So we're going to have to wait and see. But I'd be hard-pressed to pick him. I'd, I'd say it's pretty unlikely. Um, and then we've got Steph Martin. You know, a little cheaper than what we've seen Steph in recent years. But I think he's probably moving into the twilight of his career. And I think 500k is about right. I think he'll average somewhere in the 90s. And that's respectable. He's workmanlike. You know, he'll keep going all day and just a real workhorse, but not for me. And similar to Jared Witts, you know, very good players, but they just don't have that absolute ceiling. Very good draft options, but not for me. So they're sort of your categories. You know, you've you've got your super premiums, Gorn and Grundy. A lot of people will go with them first up. It's hard to argue. I just have a gut feel about Gorn. And then you've sort of got those premium guys and then a couple of guys that are respectable. Um, and then you've got a few mid-price types, which is real. This is where it gets really interesting. And I know you're probably 
quaking in your boots when Shorty mentions mid price in the ruck. Fair enough too, because it can it can go pear shaped, you know. Uh, Tom Balshame is uh, Matty Lewenberger. Oh, gee, did Lewenberger destroy me that year? Because the ruck is difficult. Because in the midfield, there's a lot of different things happening. You know, one premium. There's like 15 premiums that you could be happy with by the end of the year. Probably, probably 10. So there's more fluctuation throughout the year. We're probably in the ruck department. There's probably two that you want to end up with. And it's pretty clear cut. So that's where the set and forget strategy is quite clear. I just want to give you something to think about if spending 1.4 mil isn't on the menu for you in the ruck department. Now, my favourite is Tim English. I am a big fan of him. I've tracked his career pretty closely ever since he got drafted because a lot of the talk was this guy, skinny, lanky, but mobile, give him a few pre-seasons, let him bulk up, let him really hone his craft, and this guy after, say, four or five years, and big blokes take a while, he's going to be a player. Now, we're starting to get to that stage. He boosted his average by about 17 or 18 points last year, I think, to around the early 80s. And that was sort of your mini breakout, just sort of establishing himself. And he had some really good scores over the last month of last year. And all the talk is that, again, he's hit the track and he's absolutely flying. And I know everyone's flying at this stage of the year. But particularly, he's getting quite a bit of coverage. He's going to be the number one ruck, very talented player. Um, I really think he has to be strongly considered. 448k, he's not cheap, but at this stage, he's a guy that you've got to think about. And I'm strongly thinking about because, yes, he might be a stepping stone, but if he can continue to have a very good average of somewhere in the 90s, like he did towards the end of last year, albeit a very, very small sample, um, he could be able to just get up to about 500k. And he might only need to have a good six weeks. Gorn will naturally go down no matter what he does. And and then you might be able to save yourself a little bit of coin. And that's probably what it's about. It's probably only about saving yourself. You know, English might make 50 and Gorn might drop 100. So I know it's not stacks. And a lot of you out there are probably like, Shorty, stuff your 150k. Saved me the headache and just bloody pick Gorn and Grundy straight off. Why do you do this, Shorty? I'm just trying to give you a few options. Now, Nick Nat, also an option. We saw him play, I think it was three games last year. Scored well. I think it was in the 90s more often than not. But his body continues to let him down. He's at 457, I think it is. And he has to be considered, if he has a good preseason, a bloke who's such a brilliant tap ruckman and has shown an ability to average very, very quality numbers, has to be considered. For me... He'd have to be tearing the house down because his body is just concerning me. And at that price point, if that's where you're looking, I do prefer the English option because I think English has shown he's pretty durable and he's a guy who's on the up and he's definitely going to be a next generation star. I'm pretty confident with that. The question probably is, is it going to be 2020, 2021? You know, it's very difficult and it, it can go pear shaped, particularly in the ruck because if the English pick goes wrong, for example, and round three or four rolls round and he's priced at 440, he's averaging like 84 or something like that, and all of a sudden you're like, Jesus, none of my rookies have made any money. I need to get rid of this bloke because he's just hasn't been what I thought, but I've got no money getting generated because there's only been a price rise or two, and Gorn's flying, he had 120. That's, that's the pretty disappointing part that's the pear-shaped angle that's where it can go wrong um sean darcy 402 i really think at some stage he's going to take the mantle at freo and be an absolute star not 100 percent sure it'll be next year i think we'll see you know another sort of quality season where his numbers continue to go up i don't think we'll see an absolute explosion um Sam Jacobs is a guy a lot of people are talking about. I'm a massive no on Jacobs. 348k. Yeah, he's probably going to play some games and, you know, at times be good for the Giants. A um, bit of a change of club. But I just don't see it happening. Even in his last full season, because he was injured last year for a lot of the part, and he was also held out by Riley O'Brien. 
Um, his last full season, he averaged about 84. So I think he's well over the hill. He had a couple of fantastic seasons in his prime. I think it's well past him. I think it's a bit of a nothing pick. So it's a no from me. I'd either be looking at set and forget or someone a little more mid-price that you know will score well. It's a bit like the old Sanderlands argument. Sandy, yes, he was uh, expensive. Um, well, not expensive. He was injury prone. But at times, he was on the cheap. And the fact is, we knew that he would score well as long as he played. So it was just a matter of being fit. And Nick Nat probably fits that category. I think if Nick Nat's out there, he scores well. And then you've got the alternative option in that sort of price range of English that you go, he's pretty reliable with the body, but is he going to explode? Like he's, I'm real confident he's going to be a very, very good player. It's just a massive risk when you try and pinpoint when the breakout's going to happen. So let me know what you're thinking with the ruck department. And the only reason I sort of thought about this and, and had it on my mind was I was sort of juggling my side and I just couldn't find the balance right with Gorn and Grundy. And I don't know, it's a gut feel. There is no real logic to it at times. A simple and smart man would probably just pay the coin and set and forget Gorn and Grundy. And worst case scenario, everyone falls on their sword. If Gorn goes down, who cares? The whole comp's suffering with you. So I can see that argument and probably will set and forget, but that's not the point of this channel. It wouldn't be overly exciting if I just didn't give too many options and I just had the one thought process. So let me know what your starting rucks are. And if you think I'm crazy, also let me know. But um, while I'm at it, subscribe away and follow the Instagram channel, page, whatever you call that. I'm trying to get that going a bit more. There's a few stories up, a um, few updates and things like that through the pre-season. So hopefully that can be a bit more engaging and uh, add a bit more of a personal touch to the channel. So I'll be back soon. Cheers.